Shalom Aleikum, peace and power. This be Michael, aka Mikhail Corbin Yahoo here. Yeah, so if you read this description, you can see that it's called Conflict in the Land of Milk and Honey. Praying for the children of Elohim and humanity to repent, right? So these are the days. And so I just wanted to come on here because I wanted to weigh in, you know, definitely. Um, and share some thoughts and something that came into my spirit yesterday. I've been silent because I hadn't got a word from y'all about what to say about this matter. And so the matter came to me yesterday. And so I've been meditating and praying on it. <clears throat> and I made mention of it today in my prayer group this morning about what the spirit has really put on my heart about the matter. Peace and blessings, Elder Nathaniel. And so this is going to turn into a, a much more broad examination. But this is a preliminary statement that I want to make about the conflict in the land of milk and honey. Okay, the land of Canaan. The land we know is Israel. The land also we know is Palestine. And so we're going to get into that a little later. That's going to be more definitively described and discussed at another point in time. But I want to first and foremost say this. I'm praying exclusively for the children of Elohim. Let's just be clear about this. Only prayers that I'm offering up for salvation and redemption are for the children of Elohim. Period. Because those are those who are going to be redeemed in this matter. And some of the children of Elohim have not yet been born, even though they are alive. But they have not yet been born. But through this matter, they will be born. And so I want to first and foremost let you all know, as my master, as my rabbi taught me, I don't pray for the world. <laughs> I'm not praying for the world. But what I do pray for the world is to do is to repent. I pray that the world repents and turns back to Elohim. Much love to you, cuz. What's up, Puka? But in all seriousness, this conflict that is taking place in the land of milk and honey is very strategic. It is very strategic. It is prophetic, but it is also historically based. And we have to understand the prophetic history of this. And that's what's going to come at another time because there are some things I'm preparing to make a statement about in this regard yes indeed much love to you but i want to say this again humanity has a choice at this time we are at a very interesting crossroads and this crossroad is calling for you to come to your higher self or for you to descend into your depths. that's really all this is coming down to are you going to become a child of elohim which is being midwifed by some children of Elohim who are already born and those who are to come into life in, in life everlasting as a result of this matter as well or are you going to go into judgment into death into the lake of fire the second death so these are the choices that we have and this is just the beginning but we're seeing right now this incursion this conflict this we call Havle Mashiach, these birth pains of Mashiach, of the Messiah. It's meant to happen. It's, it's prophesied. We know this is going to happen. And so again, I pray for the children of Elohim the world over for your protection, for your cover, for our protection, for our covering, for our redemption, for our deliverance, for our gathering, for our coming into life and into light, into proclaiming the good news of Yah. That no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man what Yah has prepared for those who love him and keep his commandments. Because there's a change coming to this world and this world is going to change by the kingdom of heaven established on earth. We're not going anywhere. Let's be clear. Heaven isn't somewhere that we are to go to. Heaven is a place that we are to manifest starting from within. The kingdom is in you. The Messiah is in you. And this is what we must give birth to now. The kingdom is heaven. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. We were told that over 2,000 years ago. It's at hand. 
because it's in you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart to do it. Peace and love to you, Elder Mary. And so these are the days in which, again, we have all a decision to make. Do we go from life unto life or do we go from death unto death? Because these are the choices that we have right now. And again, I pray only for the children of Elohim. I pray for the wicked to get cut off and to remove. And we would be foolish to believe that both sides are innocent over there. Either the sides are innocent. Now, there are innocent individuals involved. There's humanity involved over there in, in any conflict, be it Russia, Ukraine, be it in Sudan, be it in Ethiopia and Eritrea, be it in Israel right now. There's, there's humanity involved in that that are losing their life. And I pray for those humans who are losing their life, that they had an opportunity to turn to the Most High before they were taken. That's my prayer. But for any wicked individual, any dark seed of serpent that is over there, cut them off swiftly, Abba. Remove them from this place. Block their names out of the book of life. That should be our mindset, to be completely honest, because this world is going to go through a major transformation. <clears throat> A major transformation. And it starts again with you and me. Who are you choosing to serve today? Right? That's what Yahushua ben Nun said. Joshua son of Nun. He said choose you this day. Whom you shall serve. My house and myself. We know Yahazel. We know Mashiach is Yahushua ben Yosef. We know this. We know this and we strive to live according to this and we strive to become perfect. Believe it or not, that is accomplishable. That is a mission that is possible. The world will tell you it's not possible. The world will tell you you can never be perfect. But I know that my master told Abraham in Genesis 17 to walk before him and be perfect. I know that Noah in Genesis 6 walked before Elohim and was perfect in his generations. I know that Yahushua in John 5 verse 48 tells his disciples to be perfect as his father in heaven is perfect. What does that mean? What does that mean? How do you do that? How Perfect? What are you talking about? It's impossible. No, it's not. If that law is on your heart, if that law is on your inward parts, and you love Yah with all your heart, and you love Yah with all your soul, and you love Yah with all your strength, you won't be unfaithful to Yah. <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. It's like if you're in love with your spouse, it's impossible you to be unfaithful on you with your spouse. It's impossible. I would never do anything like that to my spouse. I love my wife. I would never be unfaithful to my wife. Never. I wouldn't give anyone an opportunity to even think that they could have an opportunity to, to do something like illicit with me. No, that's how we should be with our father and our king. And so here we are. A few days out of the Feast of Tabernacles, going into a dark season, winter. And there's so many conflicts and wars and rumors of wars and peoples against peoples and nations against nations and earthquakes and plagues and 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 and, and floods and fires are you seeing what's taking place do you see the signs of the time are you aware of where we sit in time prophetically speaking according to the word of the most high and the things that are manifesting every day in our face Shalom, your mom. Because we have to be aware of these things. We are told, in fact, to watch and pray. Watch and pray. For that is how our salvation will come about. If you're not prayerful, if you're not meditating and clear during these times, if you tuned in to everything that is tuning you out from your connection with heaven, wow. Babylon got you. You're in the midst of confusion. If you're following the talking heads on television and you're believing everything that's coming on in the news, but you don't know why this stuff is going on, which the scriptures tell you why it's going on, but you know everything that's going on, but you don't know why it's going on. 
Babylon got you. Babylon got you. You don't want to be caught up by Babylon and with Babylon. In fact, we're told to come out of her, my people, lest you partake in her sins and receive of her plagues. Plagues are coming, people. This is, the, this is just the start. Let's be clear about that. This is just the start. And this is life and death, people. This is as serious as life and death. You know, so I've been quiet and I, I'm, I'm going to stay where I need to stay. And as the spirit moves, I will speak. And so I just wanted to come on here and let you all know that this conflict in the land of milk and honey is in order to bring forth the children of Elohim. And to remove the seed of the serpent. It's supposed to do this. It's a sifting process. It's a separation of light from darkness. It's a separation from heaven and earth. It's a separation of waters from waters. It's a separation of sheep from goat, wheat and tares. These are those days. And we are here. And so my encouragement to everyone is to seek the face of your creator. Know who Yah, the Elohim, of heaven, earth, sea, and all that is in them is, and was, and will be. I said <laughs> in a study that we're having as we're wrapping up the book of Revelation, the only reality that exists in existence is the self-existing one. The only reality that exists in existence is the self-existing one. And that is who Yah is, the self-existing one, the eternal the almighty. Please do. Toda. Thank you, cousin. And if we are not a part of that reality, that sovereign reality, that Yah is Elohim, and we don't understand the proclamation that we make two times a day, hear, O Israel, Yah is our Elohim, Yah is one. We are to make this world a place of oneness. We are to resonate on the same vibration. What is that vibration? Yah. Yah is the vibration. Yah is the mind. Yah is the life. Yah is the truth. Yah is the way. That is what we are to resonate. We are supposed to be Yah on earth. That is what the Messiah came to teach us. They didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear the masses teaching. Oh, no, no, no. What are you saying? You're Elohim? Oh, my goodness. No, you're not. Yes, you are. You were created in the image and likeness, but you have to become that. You have to give birth to that. Everybody ain't the children of a, everybody ain't a child of God. Let's be clear. Everybody is not a child of God. There are some seeds of the serpent and Satan walking here in the flesh every day, doing the works of their father, the devil. They're here and doing well because this world belongs to them right now. The earth doesn't, but the world does. The world belongs to Satan because Satan has usurped the crown because we fell. We dropped it. Actually, he didn't usurp it. He picked it up. We defaulted. We defaulted and gave it up. But it's time to reclaim what the creator gave to his children. And it starts with, believe it or not, keeping the commandments of Yah. That's what repent means. Every time the Messiah healed somebody, he said, go and sin no more. <laughs> go and sin no more. What? How do you do that? Keep the commandments. That's what the law is for. You read 1 Timothy 1, it tells you the Torah is good if it's used properly. It's for murderers, adulterers, fornicators, liars. Hey, it's, it's to correct your freaking behavior. That's what the Torah is for, to correct your behavior. If you off, the laws are meant to guide you back to getting on. That's what the commandments are for. And once you become healed, you don't need that no more. That's what Galatians 3 talks about. The law was our trainer, our schoolmaster. It built us up to become the Messiah because the goal of the law is for you to become like the Messiah, for you to become anointed, for you to be messianic. That's what this conflict in the land of milk and honey is doing. It's bringing out the best and the worst of everybody. I don't side with Israel. I don't side with Palestine. I side with Yah. Because Yah is life. 
Both of them sides are bringing about death. If you think Israel is all good, psh, psh. if you think Palestine is all bad, psh, you lost in the sauce. You don't see it for what it is. Because we're going to get into the historicity of this. And that's why, again, this is a preliminary statement. And I want to bring the historical truth forward and understand how things have become the way they are. Because it's not what you think. It's not what you think. I will say this. That land, <laughs> this is going to be controversial, don't belong to neither of them people. That land belongs to neither of them people. It belongs to neither of them people. That's a fact. That's historically proven. But people don't want to deal with that. Because what you've been led to believe by his story, as opposed to understanding the mystery, which is my story, you can't accept it. Cognitive dissonance will not allow you to accept the reality of that land and who it belongs to rightfully and righteously. Can't accept it. But we have to start doing our dome work, y'all. We got to get into this meditation. We got to get into this prayer. We got to get into this word and we got to start manifesting the truth and manifesting the life and manifesting this love that this world is crying for. The world is crying out for the children of Elohim to be born and to rightly rule this earth because what the scriptures are talking about ultimately is a kingdom. There ain't no church. It ain't no religion. It's a government. It's going to be on the shoulders of this child who rules with justice and love and truth and mercy and compassion. But there will be some justice. Yeah. Don't violate the law. Don't disrespect the king. <laughs> Don't dishonor the king. Because the king's word reigns and rules. It does. It does. And so, again, I pray for the children of Elohim. I pray for humanity to repent and turn back to the Most High. And I pray that the wicked get cut off. Turn that water off of the wicked. That's like they're doing to the Palestinians today. That's, that's, that's some wrong stuff going on over there. Palestinians are wrong. Israel's wrong. Both sides are wrong. Both sides are wrong. But guess what? It was prophesied that these devils would play like this. And I said it. It was prophesied that these devils would play like this. And so you just have to be circumspect in your walk and know who you are and who you serve and be discerning of those around you. Everybody who smile on your face don't really love you or even like you. They're playing their roles. You have to know, again, the spirit. You know spirit by spirit. And only the spiritual one in Yah discerns all things. The carnal man knows nothing, can discern nothing. But the spirit of Yah knows all. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just wanted to leave that there again. There's going to be some more coming behind this. But this is just preliminary. The land of the conflict in the land of milk and honey. Praying for the children of Elohim and humanity to repent. That's what this is about. That's where we are. And from there, everything will come together. It don't seem like it right now. It's chaos. It's everywhere. Everywhere we look, it's chaos. But guess what? We're reading Genesis 1. We just finished the cycle of reading the first five books of the scriptures, the Torah. We're about to begin Genesis 1 this week. I welcome anybody to come and fellowship with us online. Uh, if you're in Kansas City, we're going to start praying to striving to be more present in, in physical locations. Right now, we're utilizing the Blueford Library on 31st and Prospect, the meeting room there. Um, we're going to be there this week. Most high willing, next week we may be there, depending on the schedule and what's available. But online, you can um, fellowship with us virtually on Zoom. We're going to be meeting tomorrow about 1 o'clock, starting again reading Genesis 1. Because if you understand Genesis 1, we're going to read more than Genesis 1. But if you understand Genesis 1-1, one, one, you're going to understand the whole scriptures. If you don't understand Genesis 1-1, one, one, none of the scriptures will make sense to you. None of the scripture will make sense to you because that's the seed. The seed contains everything. <laughs> That's the seed. And so again, let's let's 
be sure that our walks are getting tighter, that they're aligning more and more with the will of heaven, which can be known. It's supposed to be known. I just want to do the will. Nobody knows the will. That's a lie. If you know what the commandments of the Most High are, you can find the will of Yah. Because the will of Yah is for your salvation. It's for your soul's redemption. Abdul Alim. That's the name from the past. Peace and blessings, my brother. Yes, indeed. Iman, all praises to the Most High. But yes, yeah, so check it out. This is just part one. Part two is going to be a little more challenging because we're going to deal with some history and to look at some prophecy as well. But I want to start with history first because, you know, my master said to his disciples, how are you going to understand the matters of heaven if you don't understand the matters of earth? <laughs> if you don't understand what these parables are about, first and foremost, in this history, how this history works, ain't no way you're going to understand what heaven's all about. Ain't no way. Right? And so we got to really like start hunkering down to understand what this way, this truth, and this life is all about. And so I want to thank everybody for traveling with me on this little live. I don't do this a lot, but I'm just, like I said, I only move when the spirit tells me to move. And it was in me. It was in me this morning. It was in me today. And I've been kind of wanting to say something. I'm like, what am I going to say? I don't even, so if y'all don't know what to say, and the spirit ain't told me to say nothing, I ain't going to say nothing. But here it is. The spirit moved. And I pray that these words were received in the spirit in which they came to me and were given. You know what I'm saying? I don't take any credit for anything. I'm a vessel and a messenger. I give all praises to my heavenly father and king who, you know, shows me the way. And I'm still learning. I'm still becoming. I'm still transforming and shedding my flesh and putting on my spirit, man, so that I can walk in the light of my father and king. And so, you know, hallelujah. Beautiful cousin, mission love you, no doubt. And everybody who's on here, man, thank y'all again for riding with me for this little time. Part two, maybe the night, maybe tomorrow. Got some things to get prepared for it because it's it's deep, y'all. That's all I can say. It's deep, but it's so clear when you see it, you know. And that's the beauty of how y'all works. Simplicity. There's a simplicity in the truth, right? And it has to make sense. It has to connect, you know. And so a lot of things we're dealing with now doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. Even the things we hear from people behind the pulpit, it don't make sense. It sounds good. <laughs> it sounds real good. It may even feel good. But when you think about it, like, damn, that, that don't make a lot of sense. I don't get it. And so we have to really start to seek for simplicity and seek. Cause that's, that's how y'all move. Y'all move in, in, in law and order. And laws and orders are principles proven time and time and time and time again that they manifest as truth. You know what I'm saying? And that's what the truth is. It's, it doesn't change. The truth doesn't change. It is what it is. So, yeah, that's what it is. I'm going to go ahead and just give all praises to the Most High. You know, I pray for my beloved family. I pray for my beloved friends. I pray for my, 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 my brothers and sisters in Messiah. I pray for those in Torah. They may not even know that they're supposed to be messiahs themselves and how they are to become messiah. But that's the goal of the Torah. The goal of the Torah is to produce the messiah, a kingdom of messianic people, a kingdom, not a state, a kingdom of messianic people, you know. And so it's very interesting. So just got another light bulb. So I really see where this is going now because it's so profound. It is so profound. Woo, ha, exhale. Praise y'all. Thank you all again. Be Michael, aka Moray Mikael, quote me Yahoo. Just wanted to share that. I love you all. Again, let's pray for the children of Elohim to be born and to be midwife. And for those to midwife, those who are the children of Elohim into life, midwife the children of Elohim into life. If you're already in that life, and pray for the wicked to get cut, y'all. Pray for the wicked to get cut off and pray for the human beings who are truly human to repent. The land of milk and honey. Because that's what we're going to get. And it's going to be do all over this place. It's going to be waters covering the earth filled with the esteem of the knowledge of Yah. It's going to be a day. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great and glorious day getting through this. Now, the key is to endure and get through this. And I know I'm going on, but I can't help it because that's just the fire that's all up in here. But I love you all again. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I got to get back in, get some work done on my desk. 
But yeah, sign off. Shalom Aleikum. Shalom Uvracha. Shalom Ugevara. So peace and blessings. Peace be upon you. Peace and power. I'm out, y'all. That's it. <laughs>